Are you looking for a free open source alternative to Figma? Discover PenPod, the ultimate platform for designing and prototyping applications. We already made a platform overview of this software, so maybe you're wondering why I'm doing it again. Well, it was almost two years ago. It is now version 2 and many new exciting features appeared. That's what we will focus on in this video. To use PenPot, you can simply go to their website, link in the description, and click on sign up for free. If instead of the cloud version you want to use the self-hosted one, you can follow the instructions on the self-host page. You can choose between doing it yourself using Docker or using our platform Elestio to take care of the backup, updates, maintenance and installation on the cloud provider of your choice for you. To start using PenPot on our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then deploy my first service, search for PenPot, select Choose between the different cloud providers, region and service plan based on your need. Then next, adjust the different settings and the level of support and once you are ready, hit create service. Once the installation is finished, you receive an email to notify you that it's ready. Follow the click here to get the password link. Copy the password to your clipboard and access your instance by following the admin UI link. You should arrive on the login page of your PenPot instance, work email for me, it's my LSTO account email address and paste the password from my clipboard then login. The first time you will have to answer to a few questions, let's do it. PenPot, I will use it for work, I'm just exploring, next. I usually use Figma, next. What kind of work do I do? I would just Answer randomly so we can go to the app. I like to start with wireframing next. And I discovered it with Elestio. Then start. Do you want to receive PenPot news? I will keep this unchecked and then continue. Okay, now we have the possibility to create a team, to invite other team members and to share project with others. So let's do it. Let's create a team that we will name Elestio. Let's do continue creating team. Then we can invite other members. I will add another one as an editor and I will use my email plus and create team and invite. We will check the other account later. Now we have what is new on PenPot. Okay, let's go. We arrive on the dashboard of PenPot. We have our different projects. We can invite other team members. Let's close it. We have draft, template, and libraries and fonts. But currently we didn't do anything, so it's kinda empty. Let's go to projects and create our first one. Let's name it demo app, enter, and open the file. Perfect. If you are familiar with Figma, you shouldn't be lost here. The interface is quite similar, but it has a lot of differences in the features. Which one is best? It's you to judge. So here we have our different pages. Currently we are on page one, we only need this one. Let's create a board. I think it's the equivalent of frame in Figma. We can just create a zone like this and let's add some text inside. We go here, you have shortcuts. If you over a long time, you can see T is for text. So let's add a zone of text here. Welcome to my gallery. Then you have all the options to style your text. Here on the right, so I'll move to the left. You have the font. You can search. I will be using Poppins. You can choose if you want regular text or bold. I will use black text. Make it way bigger. Let's say we don't want it to be so big, we want it to be on two lines, so I will resize it a bit. And to center it on my page, I could drag and drop it and try to center it here and then center the text here. But one of the great new features from PenPot is the fact that on a board, you now have layout options. It also exists on other elements. Let's add a layout here, flex layout, we have the choice between a row or a column. For our page, we would want to use column. And we can adjust if it is centered or not. But here you can see we have a value because we centered it manually and we applied flex later. So we need to get rid of that value here. Hit enter. And now by using layout, we should be able to adjust it. Maybe on the item itself, 
there is flex element align self start. So get rid of it, and then you should be able to control from the parent. And same vertically if you need to. But for our page, we don't want to center it, we put it on top. Fine, our text is a bit too big. We can resize it a bit here. And below, we will want to add our gallery image. Let's add another board. We'll want to be full width. We can resize it a bit from left and right here. Perfect. Maybe expand the board too. We have a bigger page. We have our gallery. And for an image gallery, what we will use is not a flex layout, but a grid layout. So we can add multiple pictures. You can see by default it created two rows and two columns. We can edit the grid and we have that nice editor where we can specify the size either in pixel, create new columns and create new rows. Here the columns I created because we have manually set a column width. We can see them. So click here to expand it and put one fraction for each. So we have all our columns here. Let's say we just want two columns and two rows, but maybe the first columns will be one and two. So the right is bigger and the first one is only half the width. Okay, instead let's do one and one and one and one. We'll keep the square for now, we'll see later. So down and let's add images. So I have a few images from my holidays in Kyoto. Let's add this picture. And because my picture is way too big for the board, it's inside, it is expanding it. So what we need to do is on the image itself, here on the grid element, you can add with 100%. So the control will come from the grid and not from the element. And you have the same for the height. Perfect. Now it's taking the space available on the grid. Let's repeat the process for other image. I will click here, add another landscape image like here, those flowers, then full width, full height. And below we'll add not landscape, but portrait pictures. So those two are portrait. Just be sure, full width, full height. And the last one, we do the same. Perfect. So currently those image on the first row, they are good because they are in landscape and we can see them, but the portrait mode should be higher. So we can go back to our board, edit the grid and for the rows, no, I don't want to add one. I just want the detail and we can say, for example, that the one below are three fraction. So it would appear way bigger than the one below. Maybe it's good, but we should expand our gallery to have more space. First, let's expand our main board. And on the gallery board, which is our grid, we can expand it to have more space. Maybe three to one is a bit too much. Maybe two to one looks better. Now it's not that bad. Here we lack some space between the gallery and the title. So we can go back to our board. In the flex layout, we can adjust the spacing between elements. Let's say 16, and now we have some space. Like we did for the page, we can do it for our grid here. You have the spacing between items. Let's say uh, 16 will keep the same between items horizontally and maybe some global padding. So 16 and 16. Perfect. Now our content is aligned perfectly. And the main difference is if we want to add new pictures, it would just fill the grid like it will do on a website when you use CSS and you don't have to adjust for every item, the margin padding and position. This way, when you will work with your developer teams, they can go into inspect, get the code. It would really represent what they would implement inside their code. So here you have the HTML body CSS. It's for the whole thing, but you have the board, all the styles that you can copy paste. 
and for the items it generated one class per item to set a background image here. It even generates some HTML that you can decide to use or not, depending on the way you like to work as a developer. One new very interesting feature is the component one. Let's go below our page here and let's add another board. We'll add it below and because we have the flex layout, it will automatically center it and position it at the right place with the right spacing between the gallery and our button. Let's add a fill color. I'll choose a random one, but it's also one that you could use in your asset and have a color library. We will just create a component library, but not color ones for now. Choose a color. I'll choose blue. You can decide to create gradients. Maybe let's use it, make it darker. Perfect. Not very modern style, but it's just for demonstration purpose. We can add border radius. And inside our button, we will add some text. Let's say view more. We can center it horizontally and vertically. Let's write the text in white. We could also use flex on the parent, but we can also just drag and drop and put it at the right position. On our button, let's name it button by the way. Well, it's here that I renamed it. We can also add some shadow. Automatically, there's a nice one, so I won't edit it anymore. Go on the button, you can do right click and create component or command K. Let's do it. And when you do it, you can see on the left that it became purple. What it means is it is now a component. Well, usually you would do it in a separate page or document and have your design system there. So now if I go to assets, I have one component, I can drag and drop it in my page and it's exactly the same button well maybe my page is too small so let's expand it again perfect so we have our two button if i only modify one for example the text here i want the text to become maybe green this is ugly, but it's an example. You can see it's not reflecting on the other button because it created a variation. But if I was modifying the main component in charge of all the different buttons, I will modify it. And then once I'm happy, right click, update main component and all the buttons will be modified. Let's discover one other great feature, the collaboration tool. At the very beginning, I created a team and invited a new user. So this is the email you receive. I will accept it in incognito window. It's the same process, so I will just do it quickly. Once my account is created, I can also create another team because we can join multiple teams, but I'm already inside one, so I won't create a new one. So continue without team. What's new, perfect. And you can see on the top left, I am inside LSTO because I was invited into that team. And I also have my personal pen pot where the projects are only mine. So just switch between the two if you want your project to belong to the team or only you. Then I have access to the other project that we created. Let's open it. If I open then side by side, you can see the cursor of the other one. It's not very visual because there's not enough space, but you get the ID. Then you can go inside the comment view and add comments. Let's say here, weird text in green, post, and on the other account, you would see the comment made by the other user. You can open it, weird text in green, sure, I'll take care of it, post, and once it's done, you can check it. We have seen the new features by creating a new project from scratch. Let's dive into the templates. When you go back to the dashboard of Penpot, below here, you have a list of templates. There are more available on Penpot website. And you have this page, libraries and templates, that you can contribute to by adding your templates to this. And you have a nice list of templates that you can download and import inside your instance. For this video, the one we will want to use is the plants app. Click on it, continue. It will import the file into your projects. Accept. And it's done. 
Now you can just open it and we have a way better looking project than the one I created earlier. You have the different pages, the cover one that is visible for people browsing templates. Then you have the design. I guess this is where the template has been designed, the different pages. Then you have the prototype page where it's reusing the different pages but to create interaction and navigation between pages. If you click here on prototype, you can see the different links to different pages. And you have a library backup. This is where all the resources and design system has been created. A good and organized structure for a project. Let's see what it looks like. Let's open the prototype and play on the top right. Here we can preview our project and see the different interaction. If I click somewhere that is not clickable, you will see in green the zone that you can click on. So if I click here, it will open the product page of this plant. If I click anywhere, I can see I can use the search bar, the back button, and here the details to add to my cart. If I click below, I guess it will open the checkout. I can use back. Then I can go back to the product, use the search bar, have a preview of what it would look like, so I can have a good idea of what my final project would be. I recommend you to read Penpot User Guide to discover different features and to help you getting started. Link in the description. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Penpot with us. If you find our content useful, please hit the like button to make it more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming platform overviews. To continue your open source software journey, I recommend you this video available here.